Good afternoon, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Back on a Wednesday, back in action. And big thanks to everyone here for getting into Classics number four. Remember the band Classics four? Chad got the last spot mojo lines, and there's everybody else. Thank you. Classics four, yeah, that song's spooky. I wish we could play songs without Actually, we'll keep this here. We'll play songs without getting copyright infringements. Otherwise, I'd be playing music during long breaks like this, but you will just have to deal with me. So we have this case here. Oh, we there it is. Break, that's number four right there. Remember, we marked it when I opened up that master case. So let's pop open this guy. Now, this break takes about an hour long, so... Comfortable. All right, so let me just show everybody there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten over there. Let me actually slide some of these boxes this way to make give myself a little bit of room here. list right here all right thanks everybody and good luck just as a refresher in classics four one autograph one memorabilia card per box on average of course big thank you to everybody getting in we've got plenty of football on the website jazbeeshobbyland.com so check it out uh, PJ is saying that the that there's only one team left in the next baseball break, Tier 1 Baseball, which is on jazzpeacehobbyland.com, so be sure to check that out. And I'm sure that'll be... I'll drop the schedule in the chat for everybody as well. So like I said, this takes an hour, so if you're watching live, this is a good time for you to run a quick errand over the next hour, do what you need to do before you settle back in live. Coming up next will be Leaf Greatest Hits Football, break number one. Then after that will be a Prism World Cup break that just filled up. And then after that, around 7.40, 7.45 Pacific will be, uh, will be the next time we'll have an open time slot for a break right around there. Good luck, everybody. I guess you could take a snooze during this break, Robert. A quick cat nap. But then, what if I? What if I? Uh, <laughs> what if I uh, say like, oh, for the next, you know, two minutes, all breaks are eighty percent off. What if you miss that? You guess you'll have to watch the entire break. You'll be like. 80% off all breaks just for the next two minutes during this break. There's Alvin Kamara. And then we got David Johnson out of 65. Oh, then you'll wake up. What if I say it really quietly? What if I'm just like 80% off using the secret word? Guess you'll just have to watch the entire break. All hour of this exciting classics break. It is exciting, actually. There's there's a lot of old school autographs that can be pulled out of here. There's also Ladini Tomlinson out of two ninety nine. Nice legends. All right. There's Simi Kasi Panda Herd. Yeah, out of 199. Did you use the secret code? 188 out of 199. Simi Cobbs Jr. Where's my checklist? Where did he go? I think he was an undrafted free agent. Uh, Redskins for that one. That goes to Michael Gallucci. Let me write these down too. I could be mean. I could troll people like that. 
at the beginning of the video, I could be like, hey, what's going on, Joe, for Jazzy's Hobbyland? Starting with off with an hour-long classics break. Be sure to listen for the special 80% off code. And then never reveal the code. You know how many angry emails I'll get? I wasted my dear Joe, wasted, wasted an hour of my life watching classics, hoping there'd be a discount code, but there wasn't. Then I'll just have to qualify it with being like, there might be a gift card code. So listen to win. Watch to win. Um, no, it's all good, TJ. In an hour-long break like this, I'll, I'll talk about any kind of sport just to keep the crowd involved and engaged. Over an hour-long break, that, that the same sport rule or guideline is off. More Thurman Thomas relics. Andrew K., you're going to build that jersey, Andrew K. That, all, the jersey, the Thurman Thomas jersey they used for this set. You might, you might put together the whole, the whole uniform. There you go. We got Blake Bortles at 25. So TJ is saying Dennis Santana got called up. Oh, wow, he did. Nice. And so he'll be the Dodgers' 500th starting pitcher of all time. That's pretty cool. Is that low or high? I don't know. For a team, for a team that's been been around for as long as the Dodgers, that's pretty cool though. There's full throttle, Richard Sherman. Who was talking about you, Crabtree? Billy Price, two ninety nine, and that's the first box. So we'll top load all of these. This will randomize left or right side. So I'm going to set that aside so I remember to do that. And this obviously goes to the Seahawks, Mike Thomas. That's pretty cool. Dennis Santana's been crushing in the minors. And so I always thought he'd be a good candidate to be called up for spot starts for the majors. And maybe even start often with with Rich Hill seemingly unable to stay healthy. Hyunjin Ru on the DL. And Kenta Maeda a little, in, a little uh, inconsistent. Walker Bueller's been pitching incredibly, so he, Walker Bueller may just be a fixture of the rotation from here on out. Stephen K. Triple Dog dares me to uh, Triple Dog dares me to do the, uh, the 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 fake break credit code. Yeah, you know what? To avoid the angry, to avoid the angry uh, listeners or watchers or viewers, I should I should have to qualify it. Stephen K. I'd be like. I'd be like, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Jasmine, this is Joe for jasmine.talkingnet.com. Doing 2018 Classics Football number four. Be sure to listen to the entire break because there might be a 50% off break credit code. So listen, listen and watch to win. And then never do it. And if someone gets angry, I'll be like, I said might. Could be, maybe, possibly. But then just do it once every handful of breaks, handful of hour-long breaks, just to uh, just to keep keep people honest. Could do that. Clam chowder might be the code. Clam chowder in a sourdough bread bowl from San Francisco at the at the at Fisherman's Wharf, pier number twenty. I don't know what pier. 30, 40 something. Pretty good clam chowder. All right, next box. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, I mean, once Justin Turner came back, TJ, there's the Steelers championship run back in 1978. Once the uh, once Justin Turner came back for my Dodgers, and with Walker Bueller, I think there's been some uh, Dodgers have started to turn things around. Kirk Benkert out of 175. So by the way, we'll look up all of these. The shipping team will obviously look look all of those up before they get shipped out. I just don't know off the top of my head right now. I know where Ron Yari goes. He goes to the Vikings out of 299 because it says right there. Legends. Another Vikings legend, Carl Eller. I know this guy out of 50. I don't know why I'm blanking on Yari, though. 
Oh, Robert Rohr says Falcons for that Ben Kurt, by the way. The old Jets logo. Mm. Uh, is it Pier 39, Panda? I think it's Pier 39. Yeah, whatever that Pier is. Alan Lazard from Iowa State, or Lazard. Lizard? Lazard? Lazard? Alan? That goes to the Jaguars. Um, Matt, we've been to the National. That's for the Jaguars. Uh, Michael Gallucci with the Jags. I've been to the National the last three or four years. I have not heard yet from the from the boss people. I have not heard yet um, about this year. I think I think we'll go this year. All right. We never find out. I never find out until late. Uh, two out of ninety-nine. Matt Stafford for the Lions, composers, and a dual relic. Classic combo is Carson Wentz and Zach Ertz. Um, oh, you work down the street from there, Panda. Nice. That goes to the Eagles, Paul Hutchins. What do you do in that neck of the woods, if you don't mind sharing, Panda? You don't have to. There's Bill Bates for the Cowboys at a 10. Next time I go get some clam chowder, I could say hi. That goes to the boys. That'll be for Andrew K. And Carl is in Southern California? Where in Southern California? When does he want to stop by? At a 299, LaShawn McCoy for the Bills. Yeah, the tier one looks nice. Stephen K said he's got he got tier one baseball cards in yesterday. And he says that they look very, very nice. Well, good, Stephen K. We've got another break, I think, pretty much close to filling. Maybe one team away, someone was saying earlier. So I'm sure we'll see some more Tier 1 later tonight. All right, this box done. Next box. So he's in Long Beach. The LBC. Where Warren G grew up. Where Snoop Dogg grew up. Hey, what's going on? Right there, thank you. All right. All right. Uh, Panda, did did Carl mention when he wanted to pop up? Gotcha, gotcha. Human resources for a Chinese community health fund. It's nice. Um, tomorrow? Cool. Well, he he knows what my hours are, right? If he if he comes by around three ish, three thirty ish, around there, he'll see the boss man too. But if it's after uh, if it's after six, then he can. Um, and if you, if you let me know what time in the chat, I can unlock the door at the right time. Hang on a second, folks. Oh, it's already so the tier one's already full. Okay, so that'll be coming up uh, in a little while, probably around that question mark time in the chat. All right, next box autograph already. Carry on Johnson. Nice. Out of ninety nine. Rookie auto. What's up, Mike? No, the uh, I left it open for our letter carrier. 
being a nice guy. Lions, although with this with this beach weather, we probably don't need AC. Actually, it does get warm under the studio lights. No AC. What do you think? What do you think? We live like savages here, Mike McCarthy? And we have to we have to open up a door for AC? Come on, man. All right, carry on Johnson's for the Lions, by the way. That's for Chad, Last Bob Mojo. Yeah, that's all of your stuff going going out to getting mailed out to you guys. All your autographs and all that stuff in there. There you go. Thanks, letter carrier dude. Could be broken. Could be broken, Michael McCarthy. You think I'd work if our AC was broken? Howie Long, one of one. Nice. Could be broken. Uh, that would be a day off for me. Howie Long, one of one card for Mike Thomas and my Raiders. All aboard. The Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. Nice. Love that Howie Long. Barry Sanders, Chrome. Uh, I actually think your Crosby might be in there. Fly, Eagles, fly. There's Josh Rosen out of 299 for the Cardinals. Andrew Luck. 299. Question for you guys. Ready? Andrew Luck, what week does he start? Josh Rosen, what week does he start? Who starts first this season, Josh Rosen or Andrew Luck? I don't believe Andrew Luck's really healthy. I feel like the Colts have just lied to us all last season. And they've, they're lying to us again this season. I mean, they're not obligated to tell us anything. But I just I'm just saying that they're that they are. 18 out of 99, classic clashes. That'll be a separate randomizer from the left and the right. So that'll be a separate randomizer. Robert says Andrew Luck will start first. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> Rex Rex doesn't even collect hockey hockey that often. Howie Long, he doesn't get into hockey breaks that often. He gets in and then bang, gets the uh, Rangers six-way auto, which is pretty amazing. He was stunned. Another Howie Long for uh, for who? Mike Thomas? Mike Thomas. Right? Yeah, Mike Thomas with my Raiders. I couldn't, I couldn't find it on the list for a second, Mike. Sorry. But a Howie Long box for you. Uh, no worries. Well, see, Michael McCarthy, that's for the uh, Titans, by the way. Mike McCarthy said, thanks, work that magic in the last cup break. Pulled him some nice stuff there. There's nice uh, Matthew Stafford. See, it always, that's three out of five. It always comes back around, Michael McCarthy. It always comes back around. Things work in cycles here. Cold streaks often followed by hot streaks. And here's a hot one, three out of five, Matt Stafford. That's like a nice, it matches the color of the Lions jersey too. I dig that. Chad, last spot mojo, Lions and all aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. Nice. All right, let's slide these over here. And the next box, good luck everybody. All right, good luck, everyone. Classic number four. And we do have more, uh, more the cup hockey on the site, folks. There's Toronto Blue Jays, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Maple Leafs. 
spot random has already sold out. So we're just waiting on the cup to sell out in order to do that spot random to see who gets the uh, the Maple Leafs. So the cup hockey from 1617 in the store now, jazbeeshobbyland.com. Get your teams. And Mike McCarthy, you don't you don't know what else to take on the Cub? Oh, any team that you're well, maybe you can get a team that you're not interested in, Michael McCarthy. And if you get a big hit out of there, you can always sell it and then reinvest that into uh, a team you are interested in next time. It's not, we're not going to get Cub too often, so be sure to get in when you can. I like the sort of Instagram photo right here, sixty out of ninety-nine. Nice, Mike Singletary, Bears. We got Travis Kelsey gold at a 99. And we've got classic combos. Wow. Mike Singletary and Steve McMichael. Classic combos, dual auto for Daniel Batera and the Bears. And that is a low number, too. I think that's out of seven. Five out of seven. It's not every day you see a Mike Singletary autograph. That is nice. There you go. Daniel Patera with a nice hit. Joe Cavanaugh's got a question for me here. Which of these guys make the Hall of Fame? Darrell Rivas, Patrick Peterson, Von Miller, Matt Ryan. That's a good question. There's Carl Eller at 299. I don't, th well, I feel like Darrell Rivas will. I, it's hard It's hard for those defensive guys to get, uh, there's Kareem Hunt, to get consideration for the Hall of Fame that quickly. I feel, and I also feel like the, the NFL doesn't, uh, they don't, I think the NBA let me backtrack here a little bit. I think the NBA puts too many players in the Hall of Fame, right? Too many players too often. And I feel like baseball is just – is not enough. They've got a weird – not enough. And I feel like football is, is even less. They, I feel like they don't put it in enough guys. A lot of guys wait, have to wait for a long time. There's Leonard Fournette. Blank back, 20 out of 35. Nice blank back for the Jags. And it'll be for Michael Gallucci. Andrew Case is all of them. I say Darrell Rivas, Von Miller are probably going to be more of the sure things. I think Patrick Peterson probably at some point. And I think Matt Ryan may be way later on down the line. But I think it'd be a lot easier. It'd be a lot easier for Matt Ryan if they knocked if he knocked out a Super Bowl or two. Because I think with quarterbacks. Like Hall of Famer Eli Manning, I think quarterbacks. I think a lot of they're more dependent on. Uh, there's Mike Singletary again. They're more dependent. There's Matt Ryan right there. Then they're more dependent on Super Bowl wins, as opposed to a, any other position player. So I think that counts a lot more for for QBs as opposed to other position players. Out of two ninety nine, Lorenzo Carter. That's just, that's, I mean, you know, I, I haven't looked at the numbers, though. <laughs> you know, so, like, I haven't really... Oh, no worries, Joe. That's a good question. I'm glad you appreciate the response. That's a good question. I'd have to do a deeper dive on, on, on the numbers if we really wanted to get into it, but off the top of my head is that... And I think that opinion matters, too, because a lot of times, sometimes you have to just... Like, he has to sound like a Hall of Famer, right? The, a person, a player has to feel like a Hall of Famer. Just from your gut, has to feel like a Hall of Famer. A lot of people might, if you have to work too hard to get the numbers, 
to justify someone's Hall of Fame status, maybe that's maybe that's too borderline. I think the only time the numbers have actually convinced me of someone's Hall of Fame status was uh, was I would say well I would say Alan Trammell of the Detroit Tigers of the Detroit Baseball Tigers. I think I think advanced stats later on has helped his case a great deal because if you look at his his wins above replacement his WAR in that era like he's among the top guys. I think Tigers fans will already be like, yo, like Alan Trammell should have been in the Hall of Fame ages ago. Like I get that, but for the rest of the country, you know, I think I think like I think a lot of people didn't quite wrap their heads around Alan Trammell until maybe advanced stats came along and they're like, yeah, you know what? He's he's kind of better than Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer. You know, which might be sacrilege to Cincinnati people listening right now. Um, but he should have been in a long time ago, but but most of the time, but th I feel like those cases are kind of rare. I think most of the time you just kind of know. You know it when you see it, kind of thing. It's like that one, what what that one Supreme Court justice uh, said back in the day about about uh, in the Supreme U.S. Supreme Court case about pornography, I think. It was like, I can't define it. I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. There's Mike Kosicki out of 299, which I think was a good judgment, too. But it's a lot, it's, it's nebulous. That, that idea is nebulous a lot, like who's a Hall of Fame? Which DH gets in first, Edgar or Ortiz? Well, probably or da probably David Ortiz. I think I think Edgar Martinez definitely has a great case to get in, but I think David Ortiz will just get in first. Isn't Edgar running out of time too? If not already, there's Troy Fumagalli out of forty nine. Where does he go again? Broncos. That's right, Broncos. And that's Oppo Joe Mojo for Connor and the Broncos. All right, we got a nice orange Richie James, two out of twenty five. Through these guys out of 299, Big Ben. I don't know, Eric, Eric Jennings, a Broncos guy, saying the best team in the AFC West, the Broncos. Are they? I actually think the Chargers are going to surprise us in the AFC West, Eric Jennings. I think the Raiders are still a year or two off from, from reaching their full potential. Can swatches for the Cowboys, Andrew K. But the Chargers, I feel, speaking of your Broncos, there it is. Their 98 championship season. Remember the Chargers, folks, they lost like... They lost like three of their first four games on a missed on a last second missed field goal by their kicker. So they they could have had two or three extra wins and probably had easily gotten a playoff spot. There's Tyreek Hill to ninety nine, and then the Chiefs, of course. You know they'll they'll have to battle with a rookie quarter or a young quarterback, second year quarterback. There's Kirk Cousins. You like that? Michael Gallucci out of 65. Kirk Cousins Chrome. That card is gold. What do you guys think about Kirk Cousins? How does he do? 
I mean, the Vikings were already winning a boatload of games without Kirk Cousins. They, they almost, with their great defense, they almost pieced together the quarterback position, and they just ended up with, with what they got. Are they better with Kirk Cousins? Are they... Are they going to go farther with Kirk Cousins? Um, okay, Joe. Brandon's got a question. You made a team, but you need a quarterback. Who are you taking, Joe Montana or Tom Brady? Well, Joe Montana's a lot older, Brandon Thomas. Why would I take Joe Montana? Isn't he like 60 or something like that? That would be terrible. No, I know what you mean. Um, if I had Bill Belichick, I would take Tom Brady. If I had Bill Belichick, if I had the Patriots of the last 10 years, then I'd take Tom Brady. But if I'm just going from scratch, you got to take Joe Montana, right? I mean, in a vacuum, Tom Brady's great, but in a vacuum, you got to take Joe Montana. Andrew K is got to go. Is gonna go with uh, R. Joshua Dobbs. He says neither. R. Joshua Dobbs. Well, he might be available already. So, unless he's the, is he gonna be third string quarterback, practice squad QB? Now, you know what? Andrew K's got me convinced. It's Dobbs. Our Joshua Dobbs. There you go. What about Hackenberg? I don't think Hackenberg got a fair shake in New York. There's a Dolphins right there. He's a he's a backup in uh for the Raiders now, I think. Golden Tate out of 299. I'll give the Hackenberg a shot. Brandon Thomas gonna go with uh, Jeff Garcia. Hey, there, there, there's a generation. There's, there's a small generation of, uh, small generation of, of Niners fans that really love Jeff Garcia. Jason Taylor out of 175. That goes to the Dolphins. That'll be for Ryan Redman. And nice Josh Allen. What is that number two? That's five out of five, Josh Allen. Andrew K and the Bills. What? Josh Allen. Five out of five, right on that lawnmower right there. Five out of five. The future of the Buffalo Bills. We saw him at the NFLPA rookie premiere recently here in LA. Really nice guy. Pretty hilarious. Nice dry sense of humor. Strong hit for Andrew K. And all aboard. The Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Nice. Another sticker back here. This is the Colts championship run back in 2006. Seemed ages ago. Oh, hey, you're welcome, Andrew. Does Josh Allen start week one? There's Arden Key out of 299. And going back to Kirk Cousins, putting a button on Kirk Cousins really quick. Joe Cavanaugh is saying he's thinking that Kirk Cousins will go about, throw about just under 4,000 yards, 29 TDs, 11 interceptions. I think they'll take that. More bills, classic combos. I think that would be, be enough for the Vikings in that defense. Jim Kelly, Andre Reed. There's Michael Gallup. Galloping for a catch. We've got full throttle Ray Lewis out of 99. What time is it? Game time. Uh, Andrew K saying McCarron is going to get the. He's uh, going to start first. When do you think Josh Allen starts? How long of a leash does A.J. McCarron have? There's Michael Strahan to 25. 
Legends card for the Giants. EA with the Giants. Oh, nice. Mike McCarthy getting keeping the luck going. Getting tickets for the Notre Dame-Michigan game. I'm assuming they're hard to get. It's like a lottery system. Classic combos, Big Ben, Antonio Brown. There's Hall of Famer Eli Manning. There's Michael Strahan. Another one for the Giants out of 99 this time. All right, four boxes to go, ladies and gentlemen. Four boxes to go. Yeah, I think we got an extra relic out of here, too. So a couple relics and an, an out-of-five autograph, which is nice. All right. One, two, three, and four boxes. Brandon Thomas says, McCarron tears his ACL week three. Poor AJ McCarron. And Josh Allen goes in. Bills don't stop winning unless they have Peterman to go in. I, I don't think I don't think Nathan Peterman got a fair shake. Those five interceptions. Those coaches threw him to the Lions or the Chargers in that case. But they but they threw him in, into the belly of the beast. Nathan Peterman was not ready. This is it would be like me going out and slinging the football around. All right. Next box, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck. Oh, last break. In break number three, this is classics number four, ladies and gentlemen. In break number three, we were talking about which teams would make a uh, – would be a surprise this season. And so my criteria – I think we kind of narrowed down the criteria a little bit. My criteria was the season before, they were under 500. And I'm saying this season they could make a push for the playoffs, if not get a playoff spot. Because I feel like every year there's a team that goes under 500 the season before, but then sneaks into a playoff spot the following season or gets really, really close. You know, what team will that be this season? Now I have the standings from last season up there. So basically, will a team will these teams make the playoff or not? Miami Dolphins went six and ten last season. Do they make the playoffs this season? Remember, the Bills made the playoffs at 9-7. and seven. Maybe the Dolphins, if they can win, can they win three more games? Maybe maybe back into the playoffs like the Bills did? Miami Dolphins, yay or nay? I think, I don't know if the Dolphins would be the one to, to make that kind of turnaround. And the Jets, Dolphins are from the AFC East. Dolphins or Jets, they were both under 500. Can they make the playoffs this season? All right, Joe Cavanaugh is saying, Finns have a better chance of losing three more games and winning three more games. Mike McCarthy is confident in Tannehill, as long as the, Tan long as the Tannehill, as long as the Tannehill is back slinging it. They make it. Out of 175, Alvin Kamara. Andrew K says no on Miami. Andrew K, do your Bills make it back to the playoffs this year? There's Ty no more Tyrod Taylor out of 299. Um... From the AFC North, the Bengals were seven and nine, and the Browns, of course, were uh, zero and sixteen out of two ninety-nine. Any of those guys make the playoffs? Andrew K. Thinking no for the Bills returning to the playoffs. Yeah, kind of a transitional year for the Bills, right? I don't think the well Bengals. 
don't know, maybe the Bengals surprise some people. They're out of 50, Dallas Godair. I mean, if Andy Dalton plays at a level that he we have seen him before, nice Eli Manning. Out of 10, 3 out of 10, Hall of Famer Eli Manning going to the New York Football Giants, EA Sports. It's in the game. It's got two Super Bowls. It's automatic Hall of Fame for a quarterback. There's Dallas Godair. There's Calvin Ridley to 10. Nice Calvin Ridley to 10 for the Falcons. That'll be for Darji. I don't know. I don't know if the I don't know if I don't know if the Bengals uh, I don't know if the Bengals can make the playoffs. I don't think the Browns are going to make the playoffs, but I think the Browns are going to look really good this season. So maybe just Steelers and Ravens. Well, Ravens didn't quite make it either, but all right, AFC South under 500 were Colts and Texans. I think the the favorites got to be the Texans to to make the playoffs, right? After going under 500 last year with a healthy Deshaun Watson. There's Brett Favre to 299. Browns in 98, or Broncos 98, that is. Yeah, I think the Texans from the AFC South. The AFC West, the teams under 500 were my Raiders at 6 and 10, the Broncos at 5 and 11. I think the Broncos might make the leap. I think the Raiders might end up with 8 or 9 wins this season, but I think I, that division is kind of tough. I don't think they'll quite quite get there. Not this season anyway, but transitional season for my Raiders with new coach and all that. All right, three boxes to go. Good luck, everybody. What about the NFC? Teams under 500 that could make the playoffs this season. Redskins, Giants, Giants might. Giants went three and thirteen last year, but that's with a lot of a uh, lot of key guys banged up. Saquon Barkley gives them a running game. New coach could inspire some things. We're not the NFC North yet, Mike McCarthy. Redskins. Oh, we're not talking about that. We'll get that after I go through the NFC, Brad. I can't jump around topics like that. It'd be confusing. Uh, Redskins, I don't think the Redskins are going to do it. I think the Giants would have the best shot there. All right, now to Mike McCarthy's NFC North. The teams under 500 were the Packers and the Bears. That's got to be Packers, right? But that's not going to be a surprise. Brett Favre, oh, Brett Favre. <laughs> what year is this? Uh, Aaron Rodgers is injured. Um, so maybe that's, not as much, maybe that's not as much of a surprise. But the Bears, could they go from 5 and 11? To right, TJ. It doesn't count. The Bears five and eleven to playoff team. That could be interesting. They won five games. Mike McCarthy's Bears all caps extra exclamation points. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, Bear, that, could, that could be interesting. That would be good for the hobby if Mitch Trubisky leads the Bears to the playoffs. NFC South, only one team under 500 in the NFC South, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers, can they make it from 5-11 turn it, five and 11 and turn it around to a playoff season? They could. I've got, they've got some talent, but that's a really, that's a really tough to, uh, division. Saints, Panthers, and Falcons in there. Yeah, way too tough of a division, right? That's what Andrew Kay is saying as well. There's the Bears. Championship year, speaking of the Bears. It's been a minute or two. Out of 10. Nice. 8 out of 10. JT Barrett. That's a blank front right there. That's cool. Blank name. No name variation. Yeah, and the, finally, the NFC West. The team's under... Well, team Cardinals were at 500. Ooh, interesting. 
Cardinals were at 500. I guess they had a better season than I thought. And the Niners are 6 and 10. I don't know if the Niners will. Tej was saying Niners. I don't know if the Niners were. I mean, everyone's excited about Jimmy Garoppolo and the run he had at the end of last season, but he was playing teams that were resting a lot of guys. You know, teams who are, who are not game planning for Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, so I don't buy I don't buy that. But if yeah, Alan, I, I, that's what I was getting to, Alan Murdoch. If David Johnson's back, and if Sam Bradford stays healthy, I mean, Cardinals at eight and eight could suddenly turn into a playoff team. There's Charlie Joyner, old school Charger out of two ninety nine. There's the Jets, 1968 championship year. Oh, there's Deshaun Watson. He's the big key for the Texans to turn things around. And there's, I don't know why this was flipped around, or did I flip it around? There's Dan Marino, instant class, that'll ship anyway. All right, now Brett, what was your what was your question? Your question was over under on what week the Browns win their first game. Well, I don't know what their what's their schedule. I have to look at their schedule, but the Browns are winning eight games this year, so they're they're gonna win, they're gonna have to win one soon. But they'll 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 win eight games this year. Steve Young for the Niners. Michael McCarthy, are you saying the Browns are going to win nine games? That's crazy talk. I feel crazy enough saying eight. It'll be closer to six, but it'll be. I'm taking the over, though, Michael McCarthy. There's Steve Young gold at a 65 for the Niners. That card is gold, John Watson. I think the over-under on, on the Broncos is five and a half. Oh, nine for the Bears. There's my homies. Patrick's secret skill is ping pong, and yet they put a unicycle here. Not sure. Not sure he knows what that is. Oh, you were answering Robert. I see. I see. Oh, I see the question. Um, well, I'm, I'm taking the over on the Browns. That's my hot take. Out of 299, Lowell Lutalele. I think, Andrew K., their win total is six. Or five and a half or something like that. You might be able to get five and a half somewhere. I think it's like six, six and a half. Over on that. Teej is asking, who do you think wins the NFC South and makes the playoffs in that division? I think the... Falcons will win the NFC South, and the Saints will also get into the playoffs. Mike McCarthy just put 20 bucks on the Browns to win the Super Bowl? Yeah, what would the return on that be? Be a lot. EA saying Browns win Week 2 against the Jets at home or Bengals week six. So where are the where are the other well so they'll they'll be they'll, they'll be the Jets week two and then they'll uh, then they'll beat the Bengals in week six. Well where are the six other wins, EA? We gotta find six other wins. Easy win against the Jets? I don't know if it'll be easy. Do we have to go through this? I'm gonna go. You know what? Where's where's the where are the Browns here? Let's, let's find their schedule here. Let's open up the Browns team page. Let's bring up the schedule. 
I don't know. See, the Steelers love to start the season slow and cause drama, EA. They're they're winning. They're winning, uh they're winning their first game against the Steelers. Schedule is right there, Todd. What up? Schedule is right there. No surprises. All right, there's the Bears championship run back in 85. Browns, Browns are winning eight. They're going to beat the Steelers to open up the season, which will put, which will put Pittsburgh in a state of panic, right? Because that's what happens early in the season before Pittsburgh gets their ass together. There's Marshall Fogg for the Rams. Because that's what the Steelers like to do. Right, Michael Gallucci? Seal Curtin's listening somewhere. Maybe nodding his head. So they'll, they'll beat the Steelers. And then Big Ben will be like, oh, am I cut out for football? Antonio Brown will be crying about something. And Le'Veon Bell will be crying about something. Or maybe, if not, maybe not even playing. I don't know. Earl Campbell, you know, uh, Pittsburgh will be screaming about, is it Mason Rudolph time? Let's get Mason Rudolph in there. How could we lose to the... So that'll happen. There's Doug Flutie. Flutie Flakes to 299. Um, then, they, then they go to... New Orleans. I don't think they're going to beat the Saints at home. Saints are pretty good at home, so maybe they won't win that. Maybe at home they beat the Jets. Look at that. That's a smarmy. I didn't realize he even winked. He winks. What a smarmy dude. All right, there's Baker Mayfield to 50. That's cool. That goes to the Browns. Speaking of the Browns. And there's Josh Jackson, Pacey from Dawson's Creek, 70 out of 99. Joshua Jackson. I forget where Josh Jackson goes. Packers, that's right. Josh Jackson goes to the Packers. Probably beat my Raiders week four. You know, then they'll be Baltimore. Oh, they're rattling off wins already. They're rattling off wins already. Pittsburgh, Jets, Oakland, Baltimore. Then they'll be, oh, they're going to lose a lot of games here. Maybe beat Cincinnati. Maybe beat <laughs> Carolina. No, Carolina. Uh, maybe shock Denver. They'll, start, they'll be resting players then. Cincinnati. That's eight wins right there. Or Baltimore. Cincinnati or Baltimore. Eight wins. I got it, EA. I found eight wins right there. Oh, you just wait. Where's Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Yeah, the, the Raiders always lose like these early season games they shouldn't lose, Andrew K. They'll do something, they'll do something stupid. At a 2-9, David Johnson. The, I don't know. There'll be something that John Gruden will be working on and then they don't execute it and then, then they'll lose. They'll do, they'll do something stupid. Eight wins. Eight wins, Andrew K. There's Ray Lewis. Yeah, see? I I'm telling you, Kyle Kramer. That's right. They're playing Carolina. They could be, uh, you know, like garbage Carolina could show up. Remember when, when Carolina went up to Chicago? Everyone's saying Carolina's got it in Chicago. But then 8 million interceptions later... That's my hot. You guys just wait. You guys will laugh now. Laugh now. And then wait till uh, 
Wait till wait till the Browns just rattle off a bunch of wins. And then you'll be like, man. We want to put some pennies on it, Andrew K? What, on, on, on Brown's win total? I mean, I don't know where they're going to win those games, to be honest with you, but but I'll, I'll bet you over the course of a full season. The vanilla saying Raiders won't make stupid mistakes. They'll be well coached. The coach is fine. Sometimes the players don't want to execute things that coaches tell them to do. That's the problem. Coaches can't play the game. I don't think... Teej thinks... Teej, as a Falcons fan, saying he thinks that Cam Newton is over it. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, I think Cam Newton is fine. Yeah, I, have more, I I lean more with what Brandon Thomas said. Brandon's like, Cam is good. I think sometimes he goes into games thinking it's going to be a breeze. Yeah, that's what it seems like sometimes. I think Cam Newton's fine. He could, he could use a little more weapons around him, though. He can't do it by himself. Although he thinks he can sometimes, but I think I think he's fine. I have nothing against Cam Newton. All right. Good luck. John Kelly, out of 25, gold. That goes to the Rams. That'll be for EA. Uh, that's true. Yeah, the completion percentage is not ideal. Nice, Eric. That's a nice gold one right there. That's not ideal, but I mean, has Cam Newton had have had reliable guys to throw it to? You know, it's not like he has like a Zach Ertz or a, a sure-handed guy like Zach Ertz sitting back there. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I feel like he's never had that opportunity to have guys to throw it to, or maybe he's running too often. You know, you're welcome, Eric. Uh, he does have Greg Ol. Yeah, Greg Ol. How old is that guy though? Is that guy even still playing? Out of 299. Andrew K. Out of 99 saying, You can't believe that the NBA Finals are over already. I know. That was a great series, though. Went seven games, Andrew K. Warriors Rockets? That was a great NBA Finals. Went seven games. If it wasn't for Chris Paul, Rockets could have won the NBA Finals. But at least we have an exhibition game to watch. Basketball's not over yet. We have an exhibition game to watch between the Warriors and the Cavs. Ronald Jones is second out of 50. So at least we can watch that exhibition series before basketball's totally gone, gone. But it was a great finals. Seven games. You know, a Chris Paul injury. You know, what, what, is, what, what is what did it. Jet sticker. Love those stickers. English classics. I think this is it for classics too, folks. I don't think we're getting any more of this, but I feel like we got a, we had a really good run. There's Marcus Allen to 65. Nice for my Raiders. That'll go to uh, Mike Thomas for my Raiders. And a redemption coming up. Who are the redemptions? We haven't seen a lot of redemptions. No points in this case either. There's Isaiah Oliver. 8 out of 10. Nice. Yeah, the Rockets got crushed in the third quarter in the NBA Finals. T. 
TJ, is that your guess on the redemption? There's Rich Gannon out of 299. And then redemption time. <laughs> the redemption is points, is John G. And it's like, I know. It's like, wow, we, 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 missed, we missed points. Robert Roar saying, guess the Warriors win again? What are you talking? They already, they already won. They beat the Rockets in the NBA Finals. Didn't you see that? Yeah, go for it, Ben. Ask, the, ask me and the room a question. Redemption is Dalvin Cook. Buy, we forgot the buyback. There was no buyback. It's Dalvin Cook. I don't know what the buyback is, what, what the card is, but that goes to the Vikings. Mike Thomas with the Vikings. Nice. There you go. Nice hit to end. Classics number four. A spooky break. Classics four. Nice. It's a song. Look it up. Uh, it's a good song, too. You'll know it. All right. So we'll do a left-right randomizer, and then we'll randomize this individual card right here. Thanks for hanging with me, everybody. Great conversation, as always. If you're, just, if you're new here, this is, the kind of, this is the kind of thing that we do. We talk sports. We chill. We kick back. We relax. Try to pull some big hits, too. So thanks, everybody. The Steelers and Giants for that one. Let's use one dice roll right here for each uh, randomizer. Two and a four, six times. Good luck, everybody. One. Two. All right, see you, Brandon. Three. Four. Five and sixth and final time. Oh, sorry, I didn't even switch the screen. There you go. Two. You can see the timestamp right here. We're at the 52 minute mark. There's 52 minutes. There's the 52 minute mark. Left side. It's just, it's just these inserts. It doesn't matter. <laughs> left and right. So the left side will get those. This matters though because it's 21 out of 99, or 18 out of 99. Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, Steelers, Giants, two and a four, six times. One, two, three, four, five, and sixth and final time goes to the Giants. New York Football Giants, EA Sports, it's in the game. There you go. 18 out of 99 on the classic clashes. And there you have it, folks. We got more football, basketball, baseball, all sorts of stuff on jazbeeshobbyland.com. So go and check out the website. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.